is up everybody welcome back to another video in today's video we are going to be doing our preview slash prediction for the detroit lions and arizona cardinals game for week number three let's get it started you no know, i got a shout out dosa d uh, man because it was actually the first time i went live on youtube and uh you know guys don't know dosa d uh, he put out a lot of good content for the detroit lions <laughs> welcome everybody to another video glad you guys are here and it is a big, big weekend for the Detroit Lions. This is a very big game for the Detroit Lions. They do not want to get off to an 0-3 start. I'm sure you guys have seen social media. A lot of you guys participate in social media. And you guys understand how big this game is for the Detroit Lions. A lot of pressure to turn this thing around after an unfortunate 0-2 start. They probably should be 1-1, but at the end of the day, they're 0-2. So this is a very big game because if you fall to 0-3... Oh, I don't know. That's just that's just not good. I, I can already see the comments now. Well, I've already seen them. I just know they'll get even worse. And I don't know if some of these comments can get much worse, okay? Matt Patricia, he's got a lot of pressure on him right now. I mean, there's even betting odds on who's going to get fired first, and he's in the top two. So this is a big game for the Detroit Lions. This is a very big game for the Lions. But it's not going to be an easy game. The Lions don't get to go play one of the worst teams in the NFL. No, they have to travel to Arizona and face the 2-0 Cardinals, who are... They're flying high right now, baby, because they're 2-0. They've beaten the San Francisco 49ers and the Washington football team. So they're feeling good, and they're trying to make it 3-0. And us, on the other hand, are completely trying to turn everything around. And we've been closer than I think the score has looked, but there's still a lot of big problems and a lot of big concerns that the Lions need to kind of fix to kind of, you know, kind of calm down everybody because the Lions need to win this football game. It's a very big week. We understand that. Now, before we get into the prediction and preview and everything like that, I first want to go through some of the injury updates, okay? Now, we don't have them all yet. It's only Friday. I believe at 4 p.m. today, we may actually have more information, but we don't know who's going to be in and who's going to be out for sure. We do have a couple, but we don't know for them uh, everybody. So we just kind of have what we've heard so far. So I'm going to discuss that first. First, starting off with the Detroit Lions, Kenny Guy. Holiday said he's going to do everything in his power to play on Sunday. Now, he has been practicing throughout the week, maybe a little bit limited here and there, but he says he's going to do everything in his power to play against the Arizona Cardinals this weekend, and that is great news. But it could also mean that maybe he's not going to be 100% if he does play this weekend. So we may not get Kenny Galladay from last season, but him just being on the field is going to make a huge, huge difference. And I, I just have a feeling that with the time that Kenny Galladay has been out, if he's on the field, he's going to make some plays. I have a feeling Kenny Galladay is going to make some plays if, he, if he's given the opportunity to play this Sunday. I, I just, I know, I, he may not be 100%, but he's going to go out there and do some big things and open some things up for this offense. Also, Desmond Trufant, the guy that I have kept such a close eye on, and that's why I've waited so long to do this prediction. Desmond Trufant has been limited in practice recently, so that's a good thing. Today, Matt Patricia said the only player that wasn't in practice for the Lions was Kelvin, and I was like, who in the world is Kelvin? Figured out it's CJ Moore. CJ Moore, since he didn't participate on Friday, it probably means he's not going to play Sunday, but aside from him, everybody else is practicing as long as they're not on IR or on the pup list. So for the Lions, Desmond Trufant could potentially play this Sunday. We were hoping he could play last Sunday. He didn't. We would really like to have him this Sunday. We would really like to have him. We'll get into some of the numbers on why we would like to have Desmond Trufant, but we know that veteran cornerback that signed to a two-year $20 million deal would definitely help against this talented, very talented Arizona Cardinals offense. Guys, I'm hopping back in here to do a little bit of an edit, and we have gotten the injury report for Friday, so we know who's questionable, who's in, who's out. We, we know some things here. We got some more information and unfortunately, the news we were given for Desmond Trufant is that he is listed as doubtful. Now, the good news is he has participated in a limited fashion for the last couple of practices, but he has been listed as doubtful. And if he can't go this Sunday, it's going to be a very, very big loss for the Detroit Lions. And it could potentially change the outlook of this game. I mean, this is a very unfortunate loss, but it's such a big game that Lions still need to find a way to get the win. So I thought I would put this little clip in here uh, just to kind of let you guys know that he has been listed as doubtful. It stinks. If you guys want the full injury report, I do a video on it. Go check it out. All right, enjoy the rest of the videos. So that means that we could potentially see Big V this week. We know Joe Dahl is on IR, so will Odeyabushi again start at left guard, or will the Lions put Crosby at left guard? It'll probably be Odeyabushi, but you never know. The Lions also did go sign another lineman to the practice squad, so we just we just have to be prepared for everything. And on the Cardinals side of things, Christian Kirk has been ruled out for this game. That is their one big miss, I guess you would say. That's their one big injury, is that Christian Kirk will not be playing for the Arizona Cardinals, which does hurt their receiving core a little bit, but it's still very talented. They still have two of the better receivers receivers in this game they may have one of the best receivers in this game and I don't know if Fitzgerald is one of the best anymore like when you're going like top 10 but he's still absolutely phenomenal and if you watched him last year against the Lions the dude just makes plays he just he just does it It doesn't matter how old he is he's just gonna go make plays so DeAndre Hopkins 
you know, Larry Fitzgerald, Andy Isabel, they still have their weapons. They still have some solid tight ends. They still have Kenya Drake on the backfield. They still have weapons offensively, even though Christian Kirk is not there. But that does help the Lions. There's no doubt about it. That does help the Lions. So just a little bit of injury information there. Obviously, we'll know more before game time when it gets close to game time at like 11 a.m. on game day. And we'll know who's in and who's out. And hopefully, we hear that Desmond Trufant and Kenny Galladay are in because that will definitely change where my prediction is for this one. So let's get right into this thing now. We did do a game plan yesterday, so I'm not going to do a full game plan to this one. It's just kind of, you know, versus like matchup against matchup. It's going to be kind of a quicker thing. So if you guys want a full game plan, like how the Lions can beat them, how the Lions can score, how the Lions can slow them down, that video is already up. But this one is more of a prediction and preview of what each side is looking like. So for the Detroit Lions, starting off with their passing offense, the Lions heading in this one, probably not playing at the level that maybe we've expected so far. A lot of that has to do with Kenny Galladay not being on the field. And Matthew Stafford, he's been good, but he's also made some very unfortunate mistakes. Like he's been good. However, he's had two interceptions that have really hurt really really hurt against Green Bay and the Chicago Bears now the Green Bay one was very difficult and we're already down by 10 in that one too and he was in a bad spot the Chicago Bears one definitely hurt he's tried to squeeze it in there and it gave the Bears the ball and they scored on the very next play and they ended up winning that game so definitely two big interceptions so he's played fine outside of that he's been a little bit cold when he came out against Chicago but other than that he's been pretty darn good it's just been a couple of mistakes for Matthew Stafford but I believe this is Matthew Stafford's bounce back game this is his best game of the season up to this point. Like Matthew Stafford will be very good against the Arizona Cardinals. As you can see, I'm repping the Matthew Stafford shirt because that, that was my prediction. In the game plan video, I see Matthew Stafford having the opportunity to take advantage of this back end for the Arizona Cardinals, which is probably their biggest weakness right now, and he needs to. The Lions need to put up points because the Cardinals will put up points as well. Matthew Stafford getting Kenny Galladay back is going to be huge. Matthew Stafford's only throwing for 7.2 yards per attempt on the season, and when he was without Kenny Galladay in week one, he's been out. He wasn't with him with week two either. He actually had his lowest yards per attempt that he's ever had with Daryl Bevel. Yeah, that's that's not good. So you could definitely see there's a big difference on his play style when Kenny Galladay is there and when Kenny Galladay is not there. Also, looking at his completion percentage, it's pretty darn low. It's 30th in the league. Some of that has to do with the fourth quarter where he's completing less of 50% of his passes. And I think a lot of that came against Green Bay because, you know, against Green Bay Packers, you're down by 21. He was really just trying to force everything. So there was, you know, some risky stuff there. Look, it's really early. It's a very small sample size. But we do know that it hasn't been the offense from last year. It definitely has not been the offense that we saw last year. So the Lions need to figure that thing out. And I think Kenny Galladay returning is going to be huge. Also keep an eye on that guy, TJ Hawkinson. You know the guy that, you know, went off last year against Arizona? Keep an eye on that guy. See, the Cardinals tried to address that. Their linebackers have been, you know, not so great. And Isaiah Simmons has really not been good. He only played in seven snaps last week against the Washington football team for the Arizona Cardinals. So they haven't been too great at covering tight ends or running backs. So keep an eye on DeAndre Swift as well, who had a pretty big game against the Green Bay Packers. Those two players are going to be huge, especially if Kenny Galladay can kind of, you know, back the defense up a little bit. If they can back the defense up a little bit, maybe the Lions take some more shots. It's going to open up, up some of those underneath routes and keep an eye on DeAndre Swift making some big plays out of the backfield. Heck, all of our running backs could be making some plays if they can hold on to the football. I mean, that's that's first. You got to catch the ball first. Now, the Lions, when it comes to passing the ball, they're behind a pretty solid offensive line. So far in the league, again, only two games, but they're ranked ninth in pass block win rate as an offensive line. That, that's pretty darn good. Frank Ragnow has been absolutely incredible at this point. Jonah Jackson is in solid. Joe Dahl was doing really well in run blocking. Fortunately, he's out though. Right tackle, we make a big V-back, which would also help. And Taylor Decker has been good. So the offensive line has been pretty darn solid. And it seems like Bob Quinn has really built a nice foundation there, which is really nice. So for the Detroit Lions passing the football, I think this will be their best game so far. Their most efficient game, I should say. And hopefully, that opens up that running game because for the Detroit Lions if they can run the football and pass the football they're very difficult to stop and we've seen glimpses of that the Lions just can't beat themselves I talked about it throughout the whole game plan is that's the key don't beat yourself okay let the other if the other team beats you, that's one thing. Don't beat yourself. Don't give them that opportunity to take the game away from you. And that's what we did against Green Bay. More specifically, Green Bay, a little bit against Chicago. But really specifically, Green Bay, we let them take that game from us, okay? We let them take the game over, and we were never able to get it back. Don't let that happen against Arizona, because your offense is too talented to let that happen. You can run the football. You're averaging 4.5 yards per carry. That's really good. Adrian Peterson has two runs over 20 yards. Ten teams in the league don't even have that. You have a good backfield. The Lions need to take advantage. They should do really well offensively. If they can play well for three quarters, not for three, the Lions should put up somewhere around 30 points. I'm just saying, it's just a very talented offense. There's too much talent out here, especially if Galladay can be healthy. So don't beat yourselves. 
Okay, let that pass game potentially open up the run game or however you want to do it. Either way, they should both work together. They should flow together. You have Frank Ragnar out there who has a 98% pass block win rate, which is tied for fifth best out of all centers in the league. Big V back to help for run blocking. That's going to be huge as well because you're 24th as a team right now. And now that you lost Joe Dahl, that hurts a little bit, but this is really close percentages. I think Big V could definitely help on the ground, but you've been able to run the ball so far this year. So this offense should be pretty darn good. We should see a bounce back as long as they don't beat themselves with penalties and mistakes now moving on to the lions defense well uh yeah the lions are, are going to be in for this one this is not going to be easy okay the lions are probably going to struggle in this game i mean they're going to give up points so when the our arizona cardinals score don't be surprised it's going to happen i said in my gameplay video it's going to happen <laughs> i don't want it to but it's going to happen okay the cardinals just have way too many weapons offensively they do and then they're a good offense they're not the best offense but they're a good offense especially now with kyler murray that dynamic to run the ball it's pretty difficult to stop. I'm not going to lie. The dude has more rushing yards than his running back. When does that happen? Like, are you Yeah, I'm serious. Kenyon Drake right now has 146 yards in two games. He's averaging 4.1 yards per carry, which isn't actually that great. I mean, 4.1 yards per carry is not that great. But you got Kyler Murray, who has 158 yards on 7.5 yards per carry. The thing is, he's being super aggressive. Cliff Bing Kingsbury has been using him like his college football band. They're just letting him run a lot of read option. Once he gets outside the pocket and he breaks contain, he's going to make big plays. And it'll also open up plays down the field because he wants to start with the dink and duck short routes. But he will break you open, especially if you can get outside the pocket. So it's all about keeping contain for this Lions defense and finding a way to slow down this run game. Because the Lions so far in the league have had the worst run defense out of any team. And that's what I really like, Javon sheared for we didn't sign him so you know he won't at least be here this week maybe next week we will but you know he wasn't probably gonna play this week anyways but the lions need to find a way to help and stop the run hopefully with the return of nick williams that is the case but we need these linebackers to step up we need the linebackers to make some plays fill their gaps make plays guys just make plays all right bring the tackle down get off a block shed blocks make some plays in the run game because if we can slow down this run game we have a real opportunity because if you can't stop the run, you can't stop anything. But if you can slow down the run, not even stop it, just slow it down. If you can slow down this run game, you're going to have an opportunity because Kyler Murray isn't the best quarterback. At least this season has shown us that he's not the most accurate quarterback. Now he's good. He's just not great, right? He can make plays, especially if he gets outside the pocket and breaks contain. But he's not the best pure passer, at least at this point, not at this point in his career. No hate to him. He's just not yet. But Kyler Murray can make plays with his feet. However, if you get in his face, he'll make them dumb throws. He's already thrown two interceptions. He'll force some passes. The passes will sail on him. You can force and make some bad throws. And that's where the Lions need help because the Lions have not forced a single turnover so far. Two games, zero turnovers forced. Now, they've had opportunities. They dropped them in week one. And in week two, they didn't really have any opportunities. Lions need to find a way to get a turnover, win the turnover battle on the road. That would be a huge advantage. Okay, Corey Unlin talked about that. And if you can get in his face, you can do that. But once you get in his face, you have to keep in mind he's going to be looking to run. So if you can't contain the outside, there's going to be a problem. It's going to be really interesting to see how much Matt Patricia blitzes him. Matt Patricia has blitzed more so far this year than either of the past two seasons, which is kind of interesting. But with Desmond Trufant, if Desmond Trufant can play, I can see him blitz a little bit more, especially with no Christian Kirk. You just have to keep in mind a lot of their passes are going to be short. So until they start really breaking open the offense... I don't know if we're going to blitz that much early. I, I don't know if we're going to. I think we may start with the four-man rush very consistently because, like Corey Ellis says, if he's going to get it out in 1.2 sec in two seconds, then it probably isn't even worth blitzing, so he might as well drop. We just need to start off playing well. Keep an eye out for maybe a little more zone, especially because Kyler Murray can run. But it's going to be all about the linebackers. Setting the edge, containing Murray, playing as a spy, sitting over the middle, short routes. It's going to be all about the linebackers in this game defensively. Lions passing defense. It's been basically identical to the Cardinals passing defense. And the Cardinals defense is supposedly in the top 10 because their points a lot and things like that. But look at these stats. Not even making this up. Both teams, okay, this is both teams' pass defense. 38 for 66 allowed, which is the second best completion percentage allowed. They're tied. They have the exact same. Also, the Lions have given up one more passing yard than the Arizona Cardinals and two more passing touchdowns. That's it. I mean, that is literally the defense for both of these teams. So the Lions, I think, are going to be able to throw the ball and they're going to open up. The Cardinals haven't faced weapons like this. They have not faced an offense that can do what the Lions offense can do. All right, especially Washington. They were definitely not like that. And for and they're an aggressive defense, so you have to keep an eye out for it because they're going to try to get pressure on Stafford, so it's going to really be important for the offensive line to protect him. Lions passing defense. The Lions, it's going to be interesting to see how much they blitz. When Trufant was there against Chicago, like I know everybody's saying, hey, yeah, Mitchell Drabisky diced him up, but he really didn't. Mitchell Drabisky was 12 for 26 for 153 yards and zero touchdowns before Trufant, before the fourth quarter. Before the fourth quarter. And then Trufant went out. 
And all of a sudden, Desmond Trufant goes out, and this guy's 8 for 10. Tony McRae's in 93 yards, 3 touchdowns. Like, what the heck just happened? Well, this is a big loss for the Lions. Daryl Roberts was actually pretty solid. He gave up one reception, but only 1 out of 5. And he actually finished really high in PFF, but it's only 5 targets. Also, Tracy Walker, he was good against Arizona last year. I hope he gets some more snaps because he's been good so far, and I know a lot of people are mad about that. I hope Walker gets some opportunities and more opportunities this game because Walker is a very talented player, and he was good against Arizona last year, manning up against guys like Larry Fitzgerald. That's going to be huge. Knowing what we we know now that Desmond Trufant is listed as doubtful, assuming that he doesn't play in this game against the Arizona Cardinals. There's a couple of things that you have to keep an eye out for. One, how much blitz will Matt Patricia bring in this game? Because like I said, if they're starting off with all these short passes, Matt Patricia may not bring the blitz up too much. But you have to keep an eye on that because how much is he going to trust that back end to blitz? The Lions only have two sacks so far, and they have the lowest pass rush win rate in the NFL, and it's not even close. Will the Lions try to blitz to make Kyler Murray make some of those bad passes, or will they try to protect some of the back end and drop more players into coverage more consistently against Arizona? That is a challenge, and knowing that Desmond Trufant may not go, I would probably lean to the side that I think the Lions will blitz even less in this game. That's just kind of how I'm feeling it, at least early. Now, later in the game, they might mix into blitzes, third downs, sure. But I think, honestly, early Lions aren't going to blitz a ton, okay? I don't think we're going to see the Lions trying to get to the quarterback that often with, with uh, more than five defenders. I mean, they're going to mix it here and there because Matt Patricia has, but I don't see a lot of blitzing against the Arizona Cardinals if Desmond Trufant can't be on the field. So we've got to keep it out for, like I mentioned, is Tracy Walker. Tracy Walker was big against guys like Fitzgerald. He can line up against receivers, and he's been really good at this point. Hopefully, he gets much more snaps because he was good against Arizona last year. He needs to get more snaps. He's been pretty darn solid for Lions at making plays in the back end. He has been perfect, okay? No one's been perfect at all but he has been solid so keep an eye on him getting some more opportunities and it's really going to be important for these young cornerbacks to just be confident and I know Amani is going to be okay I'm not too worried about Daryl Roberts honestly especially without Christian Kirk but a lot of it is Jeffrey Okuda I just hope Jeffrey Okuda comes out there with that confidence and the mindset that he's going to go out there forget last week I'm going to go eat and hopefully uh he's ready to go because you know we're going to really need him this weekend but knowing that true is probably not going to be here it makes it difficult to make a prediction. Now, so far through the season, okay, I have predicted Detroit Lions to win their first two games. Now, I wouldn't say that I've necessarily been bad with my predictions. I mean, the Chicago Bears game, I think I predicted our score exactly right, and I should have gotten that game right. The fact that the Lions lost that game, heck, they dropped the game winner, y'all. I should have, I should be one and one right now. But the Lions, uh, of course, you know, they lost that game, and then the Packers won. Well, let's just not talk about that one. So I should be one and one. Either way, I'm 0 2, right? These predictions haven't gone so well. And you guys know a lot of times I'm going to take the Lions. And if you guys saw my, you know, record prediction, for the Lions this season. I think I predicted them to win their first three games, I think. So I can't really go away from that, you know, because I'm trying to kind of stick with that and just, you know, go by scores. But at the same time, you also kind of have to take a look at what you've seen on the field and what injuries there are, and you have to change your decision, right? Because, of course, if Matthew Stafford's not there, I think that's going to change my decision on how confident I am going into a game for the Detroit Lions. But I think there also is a factor of how important this game is. I mean, going to 0-3 would be a huge problem for the Detroit Lions. There's no doubt about it. Now, so far, like I said, I predicted the Lions to win their first two games. They've lost both. So I'm going to try something different. I know this is cheating, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it anyways because you know what? Sometimes you just got to take one for the team. You have to take one for the team. Now, now this, this, really, this really does hurt. This, this really does hurt. But again, I'm doing this for the greater good. I'm doing it for you guys. You can thank me later. Here's my prediction. You guys see that prediction? I'm, I'm not going to say it, but that's that's my prediction. Yes, that's that's definitely my prediction for this game. There you go. But don't be surprised. I'm just going to say it. I'm not saying it's my prediction because that's my prediction. Don't be surprised if the Lions win this game 31 to 24. I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying don't be shocked if the Lions win this game 30, 31 to 24. I'm just saying, but that's my prediction. Okay, there you go. You're welcome. Thank me later. Thank you. Hopefully this works. Thank you for watching and I'm out. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. I feel like a weather person. I don't know why I'm holding this either, but look at all these members. Are you kidding me? Hall of Fame, all pro patrons. Look how many all pro members. I can't even see the bottom dog. What? If you guys want to be a part of this, all you got to do is click the join button. It's on the homepage of my YouTube channel, but this is absolutely not shout out to you guys. This is crazy. I had to bring out my cool shirt for this one, okay? Because y'all are legends, I had to bring out the legends. See what I'm doing?